couple of months ago, I did a review of the Two Trees 10 Watt laser engraver. And I had a viewer reach out to me, was having troubles getting his set up. Well, today I am going to show you how to set up the Two Trees, but also this kind of works for any laser engraver that has a Z axis. You can basically function it two different ways. You can either have it drop down and run at the same height the entire time, or you can have it drop on each pass that you make. And I'm going to show you both of those options. And this two trees has to be the easiest one to set up. So before I waste a lot of your time, let's go ahead and get into it and I'll show you how I do it. All right. So in the box that came with your two trees, you have this little micro SD card and you have a little SD card reader. So all you have to do is take this little micro SD card, place it inside of this little micro SD card reader and plug it into a USB port on your computer. So what I'm going to do is I am going to place my USB card here into the computer. So this is the information that is found on the USB card. I'm just going to copy that information. And then I made a new folder right here. And I'm going to paste that into this folder. So uh, once we get this pasted into the folder, then we will need to unzip it. Okay, so now we've unzipped the little micro SD card that came with the machine. And when you open up Lightburn, if you don't have a machine in it, this devices window is going to come up. So what we're going to do is, or if you've already set up your two trees, I would go ahead and select it and then hit remove right now and start fresh because all you have to do is come over here where it says import, go down to the folder that we made. I made two trees and this is all the little micro SD card that I've unzipped. So once I open it up right here, folder number five is light burn, open up the light burn. And then we're going to go to software configuration and you'll see this TS2 engraver. Double click on that. And what do you know? All of a sudden, now we have the TS2 engraver. So you hit OK. And look right here on this console. This is the big thing. Now we have this engrave button. We got to cut 2 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 5 millimeter, 3 millimeter, and lift 20 millimeter. So these buttons were not here previously if you had not set this up through that file. So let's go over here and we're going to just move the laser, um, say 100 by 100. And I am going to go. So we're going to move the laser over here so you can see it better. And then once we get it out and then I hit engrave and now you see the laser head is going down it's touching the material and then it's coming back up the proper amount to engrave. Now, if you need to cut a piece of two millimeter wood, you can come over here and hit cut two millimeter. It's going to go down. It's going to touch the wood. It's going to come back up home. And then you see it drop back down one millimeter uh, because you need to be halfway in between your wood. If I want to cut eight millimeter, I would just click the eight millimeter button and it's going to go down and come back up and then drop back down four millimeters. And it, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to home the machine at the home position, say cut eight millimeters, and then it will set it. And then we can hit start and it's going to run out there into the proper location. So now, and, and if I keep running it, it knows where home is. However, this is one of the bad things. If I go and readjust the height with the micros, now, even though we only homed the Z, it thinks that Y and X are also home for some reason. So if I hit start again, it's going to do like what it did before and move another 100 millimeters out. 
So what if you have your material out in the middle and you need to set the height? Well, you can either do two things. You can slide the machine over to wherever your material is at, and then you can go ahead and have the Z-axis check where it is, but then you're going to have to come over here and hit home. But if you notice, it keeps the height, and then you can run from that height, and then, you know, if you're trying to keep your absolute coordinates. Other option would be is you could always go from, you know, current position if you have a mark or something and you know you want to run it from there. So this is the way you would do it if you were going to run every path at the same height. But if you want to do an auto sync, but now I'm going to come over here to my cut layer and then you come over here to layers. And so I've got number of passes set. Okay, we'll see our Z offset and all that is blacked out. So we're unable to use that right now. So let's go over here to our machine, uh, our device settings for the TS2. And let's click on enable Z axis. So now that we have the Z axis enabled, when I come over here to my layer, I've got a Z offset. Now the Z offset will be how much it moves before it makes the first pass. So if I want to say drop down two millimeters, make the first pass, and then after that drop one millimeter per pass, and we're gonna do say four passes. So I say, okay. Now, since I have redone some, you know, different things, it's always best to home the machine. But if you notice, the Z axis has not changed. So we are still at the 1%. So we're going to come over here to our laser. We're going to hit start. And now you see it just went down two millimeters. It's starting to make our pass. It made a pass. Now it dropped one millimeter. It's making another pass and dropping another millimeter and making another pass. So you could have it set up that way to where you can have it slowly step down as it makes each pass. Okay, so let's see just how far we have. So we're going to come over here to engrave. This is going to drop down, and that's going to set us up to our proper height. So if we go over here and click on our Z down, making sure you have one, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, and everything's good. You see right here, we hit seven, and now our hard limit is triggered. That means that we have six millimeters that we can go down. So if you want to go five passes, you can drop one millimeter per pass if you start with one millimeter down. But you have a total of about six millimeters before you're going to hit that hard limit. Okay, so you can come over here and you can edit these micros, but you only get six of them. So if I want to edit this too, I can say cut 12 millimeter. And then I can move my Z down to 6 because that's going to be half of 12. And that is as far as we can go. So if I want to hit cut 12, it's going to go up here. It's going to rehome the machine. And then it's going to come down 6 millimeters. And that is as close as I can to the wood. So I hope that helps you out. And if you have any more questions, leave them down in the comment. I'll be glad to share what little bit of knowledge I have with you on this. But again, I paid for this laser out of my money. Out of the six lasers that I've used, this seems to be the best all around. Now, one thing I have noticed is that if you do hit a hard limit on this particular machine, it doesn't stop. It just kind of click, click, click. Um, whereas uh, other ones, 
when it hits uh, that hard limit, you know, it will stop the machine. So just be aware of that. So if you try to go below six millimeters, you know, if you put it 10, it's going to go down and it's going to have that probe digging into your material and it's going to mess up your burn. So just be aware of that. So when you're setting up your sinking, make sure that your Z offset, which is the amount that it goes down before you start, and the total number of passes and the amount you drop per pass does not exceed six because six is the maximum that you can drop on this laser um, and still be able to have it function. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I do my best to answer each and every one of them. And until next time, have a wonderful day.